Welcome to the Mobile Fabric video tutorial series. In this particular video, we will see how to enable analytics from a native iOS and a native Android app using the Mobile Fabric SDK. We will specifically look at tracking the user journey through the application events to see what the application end user has been doing with the app and send some custom metrics from the application and be able to build reports with the custom metrics and events data. The sample app we will be taking up is an e-commerce app called Kony Store, which enables one to browse through product catalogs uh, from Best Buy and view the products, the product price, and any reviews or ratings that has been given to the application. This specific scenario we will be looking at is searching for a product and seeing what products are viewed most by the end user and also to see what forms and what path is being taken by the application user. So this lets us, for example, track items like uh, which product is used more, what product sells, and so on and so forth. Once the application has been published to your Mobile Fabric Console, you should be able to see it in the Apps tab in the Mobile Fabric Console. Go to the Publish tab on the Mobile Fabric Console and publish the Kony Store app to the environment where you wish to connect. Once the application has been published, we can get the app key, app secret, and service URL by clicking on the key icon in the publish console. Using the app key, app secret, and service URL, we can initialize the client SDK so that the client can point to the backend to which the application has been published. We have APIs for initializing the client SDK for iOS and Android. Now let's look into how to enable specific events for this application. To send application events, we first get an instance of the metric service object which has the APIs for metric service and then set a user ID to be able to uniquely track the events happening for a particular user. This can be set in an application after a login or using any internal ID to track the user. And then we have an API called send event for sending the application event. The event takes the event type as the first parameter. The event type could be one of form entry, form exit, touch to include any button clicks or any touch events, service request for any network calls, in initiation, service response for a network call response, any gesture like a double tap or swipe action being done in the application, orientation changes like changing the application from portrait to landscape, landscape to portrait, any errors or exceptions that occur in the application or any crash in case you have a crash handler written for the application. You also have the ability to send custom events for sending logical events such as a login event or a check deposit event or a uh, add to cart event or any logical event that makes sense for the application. Now going back to the code, we can see that the second parameter being passed is a subtype to the event to say what type to categorize the type of event. So for example, for a service request, we try to give it the name of the service which is being invoked in the backend, like a get products. And the form ID is to specify what uh, UI form the call is being made from. And the widget ID, in case of a button or a gesture and stuff, is supposed to give any ID of the widget to be able to track it. The flow tag is to specify what logical flow of the application the application is in currently. That is to be able to classify the events at a higher level in terms of application flows rather than getting more granular level when the information is going sorted through by a business user for making sense of the data. The same kind of APIs are also available for Android and we have similar enum types available in Android as well. Here we see the snippet for Android where we are setting the user ID and setting the value for event subtype, form ID, widget ID and flow tag as was the case in iOS and call the send event API with the enum for the service request subtype, form ID, widget ID, flow tag, and any external data called metadata. The format of the API is similar in both iOS and Android SDKs. Please go through the documentation for the SDKs to know more about the metric service APIs. We have APIs for flushing the events. We have APIs to set and get a flow tag. We also have helper methods for reporting an error or handled exception. The event config API lets you configure as to how many events to buffer in the application client side before the data is sent to the backend via a network call. The flush count determines how many events are stored and if the network is unavailable, it keeps storing the data until a max buffer count is reached. Beyond the max buffer, the data is not 
See, if the set event config is not specified, default values will be picked up for the same. All these details are available in the documentation for both iOS and Android SDK. The other objective that we intended to do in this tutorial is to send custom metrics from the application. The report section of the mobile fabric console and click on custom metrics, click on the particular app for which we are trying to build the custom metric and click on add custom metric to enter a name and the data type and aggregation. The name is the key for that particular custom metric and it has to be unique within the application and the data type is used to specify whether it is a double or a string or a date timestamp or boolean so as to be able to save it in the data type in the database and the aggregation is valid for numerical values and it lets you have values like sum average lowest and so on once you have defined the parameters for the particular application you can save them for this sample we have created four parameters called product name which is the name of the product that I'm trying to browse the SKU which is the unique ID for the product the price of the product which is prod price and the user rating given for that product which is prod rating once we have registered for the custom metrics from the mobile fabric console we can start sending custom metrics for the parameters as defined in the case of Android we need to create a hash table and then put the key value pairs as defined in the register custom metrics so product name was a string with the name of the product price is a double with the price of the product Q is a unique identifier and the rating is a double again so we send the we add the values into a hash table and then we also put a form id so that we know which form this call was being made from and just send the hash table and the form id to the send custom metrics api the same api also exists for ios and we can send the form ID and the key value pairs as parameters to the send custom metrics API. We can see the application launched here in an iOS simulator and it is showing several catalog of products that it has. Let us go to a particular catalog called video games and let me select Xbox One and it shows me the list of Xbox uh, options that it has and I choose Xbox console. This gives me a list of all the products and the name and price and image of the particular product. Let me open up a particular SKU in it. It gives me the description and any user review and rating that it has. So now I've played through the application. I searched, I went to the product console, I searched for Xbox and I viewed some of the data in it. Now all this data has gone to the back end and I should be able to view it in case of on-premise immediately and in case of cloud after 15 minutes. Let's go to the mobile fabric console to run reports to view this data. So we click on the standard reports section in Mobile Fabric Console and click on the event activity report to see what forms, for example, I've been viewing. Let me run it from Feb 1st to Feb 22nd and see how this app has been used. So I can see the various forms that I've entered and how many times I've viewed a particular form and so on. I can refine this report and say, I want to look at or choose all the event types that I want to run to I can group the events by sessions, devices, users, as well as add any extra condition that I want to run it for. Once I've decided on the data that I want to view, I can export the same as a PDF as well. The same data is also available for building custom reports from the custom reports tab. here. The custom reports has the reports that I've built in the custom report section and the views for building the reports called as ad hoc views in the ad hoc view section. Each report, custom report, can be stored in a shared area common to the account users or private, which is only visible to the particular user that is building there. For this tutorial, let me pick up a ad hoc view called as Boost Promotion and let us see how it was built. Here we see a custom report that I've built for this particular Kony Store application by using the product price and product name and just trying to see the count of how much of the product was viewed or sold for this example. So it is a very simple interface of just double clicking to add it to the column or row and once you've added it, you can view the total count or items in the columns by modifying or pulling this icon here. I've also added a couple of filters for filtering the product price and viewing the product name. Any report that is built like this can be saved and run as a regular report from the mobile fabric console in future. 
For more information on custom reports, please view the custom reports overview video. For more information on standard reports, please view the standard reports overview tutorial. For more information on Kony products as is, please visit developer.kony.com. Thank you.